evening, ladies and gentlemen of Geno Valley and children of all ages. My name is Mark Twain. I'm coming to you live after 110 years at the Chino Valley Library. I'm described as a uh, writer, a humorist, the greatest living uh, entertainer of my time, a publisher, a lecturer, and William Faulkner, a great Southern writer, said of me that I am the father of American literature. And who am I to argue with Mr. Faulkner? So I'm here to introduce to you a series of productions that we here in Chino Valley are going to be doing for your edification based on the book, Cow Pies and Cow Chips or something like that. I can't remember what it is. I'm so old. But the book was written by uh, Ellen Jen, and uh, she was the postmistress here for a while. And uh, she wrote down a lot of her memories in a series of books. And uh, we're going to be pulling excerpts from those stories and presenting them to you. Those of you who are new to the area, you will be amazed and surprised by the quality of the storytelling that is in this book. And we hope to recreate that for you. Uh, but first, uh, a little backstory for me. Uh, while I am and have been dead for 110 years, I was born bored, bored, bored. So Mayor Croft and the town council invited me to come and speak to you, and I'm so glad that they did. I was here a long, long time ago on my way to the California gold fields, and that's a whole nother story in itself, but I came through this area on Mr. Perkins Railroad through Perkinsville. It was a slow train, one of those very slow trains that goes for a half hour and stops for 45 to rest. And we were going up through Jerome, and you can imagine how long that took. And there was a passenger who suggested to the conductor that perhaps he might want to remove the cow catcher from the front of the train and attach it to the caboose in the back. Uh, as it was, we weren't likely to run into too many cows at the speed we were going. However, that did not preclude a cow from walking up on the back. So I ended up here in this beautiful little valley and I swore I would get back and here I am. So it'll be a privilege to tell you these stories. Uh, we'll be doing this on occasion off and on until somebody tells us to stop. So <clears throat> with that in mind, I, I'll begin to warm you up regarding uh, the creation of this book and the stories went in. Um, back in the early 60s, there was a lovely lady named Ellen Jen, who I already mentioned to you, and she compiled a history of Chino Valley. And she wrote a book that covered the early history of Chino Valley in her publication published in 1977 while I was still dead. This wonderful gift to its citizens was respectfully revisited and added to by an enthusiastic committee during the present day uh, representing the town's 50th anniversary party commission. I do love a good party. Uh, most times in a good party, there's a little whiskey involved, and I do like my whiskey. The town of Chino Valley thanks all of those people who provided original materials and stories and dates and mostly furnished from memory, and I'm sure theirs was better than mine. And it is our hope that the newcomers to our charming little valley here will enjoy learning about its history. And you folks who have been here a bit longer will enjoy recalling these tales some of you may remember them a little differently. Some of you may remember them exactly as it's in the book. We aren't going to quibble over details. So there's a rich heritage to preserve here in this town. I'm proud to be part of the effort to accomplish that. And with now, I'd like to introduce uh, a character from our early history uh, who represents the pioneer spirit. Of Chino Valley. My name is Miss Desi Grandy. I'm the first recorded female teacher in the Chino Valley settlement. The year is 1881. 
I'm paid $60 a month, and I have 34 children under my care of all ages. Little more is known about me, but perhaps I tell you that I came to the Arizona Territory by the same Perkins Rail in 1878. Maybe I tell you that I left my family behind back east. It was a difficult choice, and these are difficult times. We've had Indian attacks, isolation. Everyone worked together, though. We're building a better life together. It's been a struggle, but we were happy. We have a future here. The frontier folk in Arizona ain't got but a scrap of civilization on God's green earth. So it's all that I can offer to give their youngins a proper education as best I know how. Many children of the century, sadly, have had to terminate that education far too soon in an effort to support their family. Even the well-known author of our era, Mark Twain, had to drop out of his education far too early at his father's early death. When he left school to work, he continued his lifelong learning at his local library, reading at nights. Our settlement won't have a library yet for many decades. We do have a post office, however. I close with a poem by the Chino Valley's postmistress, Ellen Jin. In the calendar of life, there are but three pages, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday is oft forgotten. Today, not fully appreciated, and the uncertainty of tomorrow holds fear and awe. The selfish think only of today, the idlers only tomorrow. But happy are they who, unraveling the mysteries of yesterday, find their life enriched forever. Ellen Jin. Mm -hmm.